going to be in Zane versus Suppy. This is going to be a best of three. Um, and let's hope nothing else breaks today. Is I guess all I can really say. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, ready. Who just subbed? Venomuro. 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 Thank you very much for subbing to the channel. We all subscribed. Uh, you will also notice we pro uh, well, we have no delay right now, guys. It the stream just would not go live with a delay for whatever reason. So I don't feel entirely comfortable doing a cast with no delay because it's not that I don't trust anybody in the tournament. It's just the way we're used to doing things and uh, you know, stay safe and all that. But it's either this or nothing, it would appear right now. So we kind of have to just go with it for the time being. Uh, I would like to mention Penguin is streaming his matches today. So you can check those out as well if you want to see some other casting on the brackets. Or not casting, excuse me, players in the brackets as he's playing, not casting. At any rate, folks, welcome back to the Corsair Cup. This is going to be the first best of three today and spawning in the bottom right side of the map. Playing for EC Visualize, it's going to be the Red Terran player in Zane. In the top left, as the Blue Zerg, he is Suppy. Now this uh... is really cool. Because Suppy has been so preoccupied and busy with life, mm -hmm. it's odd to see him playing one of these cups. Yeah, he seems to be coming back. I mean, he was, like, streaming, like, once every couple of weeks or something like that. And, I mean, Zenith had kind of the same thing going. And then now he's participating in, in cups again, which is cool. So I guess he just found some passion. What's interesting, though... EG was like, was, like, Huck's uh... going to Overwatch, guys. We need StarCraft back. <laughs> well, that's that's where I'm kind of like, that's why I'm making all these sounds, right? Is that it's funny that Suppy, first of all, has the RC still left on his name, which is super, super old. That was back when they were sponsored by Raid Call. So it's like, you haven't bothered <laughs> using this account. Well, in, the name. in fairness, this is Europe, for those who don't know. And there's really yeah. no reason for Suppy to be regularly on Europe, I suppose, much less care about the yeah. name tag he has. Um, I'm sure if he's actually also... grinding anything, it's probably on like a barcode or otherwise. Yeah. They also removed him from their website, I believe, recently. Uh, him and Xenocide are both. Oh. So, yeah, because a ton of people have been asking, like, you know, like, once every week on Reddit, like, w who's playing for EG still? I had not heard or noticed that, but that's very uncomfortably awkward. I hope that's not the case, but again, with how inactive they've been, I would understand at the same time. You know, a perspective of, like, a team owner would be you'd want players that are doing things, not players that are going to school. Otherwise, you're just sponsoring kids <laughs> going to school, and that doesn't get you anything. See brownie points. Brownie yes. points, maybe, yeah. Anyways, uh, so in Zane, we already saw Beat Eki. Unfortunately, again, you guys missed the very end of the game. It really, it was about 30 seconds after the stream cut out. Uh, Ultras pop. They didn't have kindness plating, so we all know how that goes, and that was that. Suppy, on the other hand, though, uh, he just won CSL recently for his team. We got to cast that actually at DreamHack Austin live, which was really cool. We got to witness his his match of importance as his was the nail in the coffin to kick Tesla mm -hmm. out. But as good as that may be, you're coming up against Europe, which is going to give you a latency advantage or disadvantage. I don't know. Uh, where's Berkeley? Is that East Coast? Yeah, uh, West Coast. West Coast. So, yeah, he's really going to be playing a disadvantage oh, yeah. coming to the... Uh, to the European server. But then on top of that, Inzane's actually not a bad player. Like, okay, Inzane's Grandmaster, and that's saying one thing. But again, it's another to say about how he qualified for, I think it was like the safety net, or I don't remember which, but one of our tournaments that had group stages. So you know there's big money involved with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I certainly give this to Inzane, just like I gave the last game to Inzane. But surprisingly, and I don't know if this is like a versus Zerg thing, or he just underestimated Eki. I don't know what, but he actually didn't look like stomping ground strong versus the uh and you know, the first round opponent which oh, are you know usually um pretty easy sorry Eki. <laughs> um so i don't know if it's a dirt thing uh we'll see versus suppy here on frozen temple seeing how far suppy can get in zvt because if he can get to a similar stage well then all he has to do really is wait like 30 extra seconds that Eki didn't was unable to because he was being pressured and uh he'll love you well, know, ultra low score to go difference of waiting versus being able to wait though as well if you're constantly under pressure and you've got that army just knocking down your fourth, barreling their way to your natural, you don't really have the opportunity to chill back and hope that kind of playing completes in some situations, like the one we just saw. Uh, either way, it does look like it's a bit of a different opening, though. We're not going to have the Hellions darting across the map through a medevac anytime soon. Unless this mm -hmm. was just the sickest fake. Nope, the Overlord. <laughs> the Overlord will not be mind-gamed upon. Apparently not. Alright, so it is going to be fast drops with Stim. 
Unless he just wants to push you to the middle of the map, which, I mean, you could do as well. <laughs> it's tough he just has to have the units prepared for this. I mean, he scouted it after all, so he should have uh, some knowledge of when to make units. That's what you get from getting Overlord speed pretty early. Yeah, I think that knowledge is going to kick in soon. I mean, we just saw eat drones come out, and that's fine. Sets them up to, like, 45-ish, and that's good. That's about where you want to be. It's more of the double Evo chamber I'm a little bit more worried about, because if he's going to start investing minerals and gas and double upgrades this early, that's going to be worse than droning. <laughs> Yeah, um, mm, well, now's the time to make those units and hold off on the 1-1. One, one. So only five roaches are on the way. Even if those five roaches were, like, underneath the medevacs, I mean, I think just boosting over them would have been still been worth it. Uh, actually, stop. Make a pit stop to kill an Overlord to try to. They fail. <laughs> Pick up again. Overlord there speed hype. Yeah, right? And now Suppy has, like, you know, 10 extra seconds to get more roaches. And that's actually pretty crucial, because I think he was waiting for his larva, or maybe for his yeah. bank. Not sure which one. He's got a little bit of energy in these queens. Not a lot for transfusing. First one does go down pretty quick. No chance to transfuse. This other one turned to it, so I guess we're going to call that latency. Hashtag Europe stuff. Does get a transfuse on the second queen. Medivac's getting a little bit low. That roach you know, does push this back initially. Now the problem really becomes, though, chasing the drop around. Trying to get from the main to the third and back again. Hmm. One of the medivacs goes down. It was empty, however, so not the end of the world. Yeah. And now the uh, queens are mostly out of position to probably take care of this one. Unless Sinzang goes back to the third. Yeah, that's not a good idea. <laughs> queens are still waiting there. And now Suffy starts his 1-1. One -one. So that was a pretty good hold. Um, I mean, it was an appropriate amount of units. Like, maybe you could argue, like, a few roaches, but that's really nitpicking. And he can continue to drone, first of all, because he is only at 45 drones. Like, even with SCVs, never a good sign. Like, he needs uh, probably 15 more and looking for that fourth base. Oh, you know what I just actually realized is going to happen probably at least once today? What? We won't get dragged back into some conversation, hairball shenanigans from like five minutes ago. Because we're actually alive and people will be discussing oh. our stupid conversations in real time. That's true. We won't have repeat discussions it's like oh we were different. talking about poop shaming five minutes ago time to bring it up again yeah oh i used the emoji poo i told really? everyone to keep it a secret and they did but i just i had to come clean with you what was that like in your own twitch chat you mean or what no it was on battle net oh because i was gonna say it would only it would only matter if it was in starcraft like i wouldn't care if you like copy paste it a poo in twitch chat Wow. Nope, nope. So I, I did it in StarCraft. So what I'm basically getting from this is this is basically the bed situation all over again. Where everyone oh, I'll use <laughs> <laughs> except for Ripken gets some of that action. Wow. You Phrasing, please. You pooped with everyone else, but not with me. I only pooped with one other person. <laughs> the fact that you pooped with anyone else is a problem. There's no way you rephrase that sentence to make it okay. <laughs> All right, Suppy pushing down the middle of the map. He's got quite the army. He's got double the supply almost, but there's tanks. There's 1-1 one, one for the bio. This is a good army out of Insane. We'll see if it's enough to overcome the numbers. Big concave coming in out of Suppy. He completely takes this first part of the fight by storm, but these roaches are getting low. They're getting thinned out. Only a handful of ravagers will remain. We'll see if the tanks can shuffle around. Oh, wait, did he lose the second one? He did. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay, so that's one tank shuffling around. Second tank spawns. You can start picking that one up. This looks like it would have been manageable, maybe even if he had just pulled a couple SCVs, but he is starting to get pushed back. The problem is, though, in Zane's production is just not keeping up. Eight Marines to 12 Roaches at a time, that's not going to cut it. Well, the good news for Inzane is that he saved most of his STDs, only lost 10. That's really not bad. And Suppy really was quite all in with this. I, I didn't think he was going to go for it, but he definitely did. 1-1 one, one Roach push, only on the back of, like, not even really saturating your third base with only 46 drones. <laughs> if this ends up getting pushed back, that is going to be game, unless he can kill, like, 30 more workers. Yeah. Shout out to that one guy in chat, by the way. He's like, wait, what? People poop alone? Is that normal? <laughs> <laughs> you poor, poor bastard. All right, these tanks be shuffled back once again, a little bit scared, but perhaps a little too scared. They don't get any shots off, and a lot of the Marines die out for that. The idea is you want that Marine buffer kind of doing some damage, but also soaking the hit so your tanks can fire. Unfortunately, not really happening. Three tanks on the high ground, though, now looking fantastic. As Suffy moves into a very unfavorable position, he might be getting too ahead of himself like he's taking on this bio, no problem. But these three tanks are like seven kills, seven kills, three kills. Uh, he's starting to lose them, mm. though, that lack of pickup. Almost loses the medevac. All his defense is now gone. I think it's safe to say Suppy doesn't care whether it's North America or Europe, college or regular StarCraft. 
The Overlord's rallied. He's got this game. Yeah, I think Suppy does. He's getting into that production. He's starting to get rack, rack up all of those SCD kills. And that's just, I mean, a well-timed push, first of all. And Suppy, I, this might have also been like a little bit of insane, just not expecting it. So not really like lack of scouting, but just, I mean, who is going for these Roach pushes anymore? I think they're a lot less common than they were like a month, two months ago. Uh, two months ago. Like fast ultras are definitely making a comeback. So that, that just could have been a complete surprise. And luckily it is a best of three now. So if it was, he can kind of, I don't know, prepare for the worst next time. Shout outs, by the way, to uh, XXX Reap XXX for the sub. Resub, excuse me. Awesome stuff to see. Mm, this is interesting. If Enzayan can start taking, oh, first of all, kill all these overlords. But okay, stop you, please. <laughs> yeah, that was unnecessary. He's about to have two two upgrades, and his bio force really did get to well, a nice count. So, in Z, we looked over for a moment. Like he tried to do a counterattack, and Suppy defended and deflected pretty well. He's killed so many SCVs, and he sees the command center is lifted. This is where cockiness might be his worst enemy, because mm -hmm. Suppy probably felt very much like he could just say move and joke around at this point. But uh, his upgrades will be matching in a moment, and if that's gonna be the case with a concave at the top of this ramp, tanks be damned. There's only like two. Well, they're in a choke, and it's just, it's really about that bio now. The medevac counts, I mean, some of them almost went down, but... Yeah, Suffy's not, not really, trading this so. out very well. There's no more Ravagers no, to be not. picking these off and forcing it out. Now it's just Roaches. I mean, again, like, two two weapon upgrades to the Roaches isn't bad, but he went in early. Well, yeah, I just, I don't, honestly don't think he would have had enough Roaches in, in general. Like, that bio force... There's a surprising amount of bio for how much damage he was taking, losing his SUVs, losing his third base, and... Uh, Suffy certainly didn't expect it. Oh it's, my god, I, insane. <laughs> I don't know I who, insane oh my god to get more. Yeah, GG! Alright, so Suffy will not take game number one as expected and end up just straight up dying. Zane locks down that first game of this best of three. Okay. Ouch. Uh, we'll do ourselves a favor and not play ads for you guys here. We'll just finish up this best of three, but I want to let you guys know that when this best of three is finished, we'll play some ads. Um, so you can all time out your breaks and whatnot. Again, the sad report is Beastie appears to have forfeited today, so someone named Hino SC advanced over him, so the winner of this will play that individual. We may stick with this bracket, we may hop somewhere else. I know that I'm really looking forward to seeing which Zerg is the best between Solo, Cham, and Bly, because they will most likely fight Mana in the round of eight, which I am really looking forward to. Hmm. Selfie's next choice of map is Frost. Okay. Uh, Shoutouts to Tarith's Finest as well as H. Stimmer Damn or it. Steimer for the 2 month resub. I was like, oh, someone did a clip of one of our old VODs. Not one of our old VODs at all. Oh, is it poop? Is it the poop conversation? <laughs> yeah, unless like five minutes ago it was an old VOD. Definitely retweeting that. Thank you, Sir Arthur Simon. This guy's very active on Twitter, actually. I like him a lot for that. But uh, All right, let's hop into the game. By the way, oh man, so. We had this guy be really shitty last night. I made a tweet about it just because I was like, I'm so done with just constantly taking everybody's crap, right? In control, I literally, like, if I was drinking water, I would have done a spit take in real life. In control's reply to that that tweet, dude, oh my god. I was <laughs> laughing English. about that after I went to sleep, man. I'm like, I'm having dreams about it. I'm like... <laughs> Anyways, uh... Yes, yeah, just speaking of the Twitter. Uh, we are getting into game, though. Spawning here on the bottom left side is going to be the Red Terran Flare. He's up 1-0 in Zane. In the top right, uh, the Teal Zerg, he is Suppy. Now, I really don't feel like Suppy did a lot that was too wrong in that game. There was, like, a couple of things here and there, and then it started snowballing when he, uh, we'll say, over-dedicated to trying to kill his opponents. Like, maybe if he pulls back, and maybe if he takes a breath and reconsolidates, he comes to win. And that's when we see a lot of those games where pros are in that spot, and they pull back for what seems like no reason. You just got to see why there was, like, that subtle reason behind it. Mm -hmm. Um, I... I really thought Enzane was going to die when his production was compromised, but oh, I guess yeah, it wasn't as compromised as much as I thought it was. Uh, I guess only, like, half of the roaches went up to the main and half went to the natural, so that could have maybe been something Suppy fixes. But I was, I was going to say, like, if he lost, then he might be more prepared for the next game. You know, like, oh, he's going to use the Type 2, do a roach all in. But Frost, cross spawn especially, I I wouldn't suggest, you know, I was like Suppy's coach, I wouldn't be like, you know, go for the all in again. 
So this is the map where we'd see something like what Eki did, like go going to those fast ultras and trying to hold on. So I don't know whether it would be wise or not, but I'm remembering on this map too, we actually used to see Nidus Storms from time to time back in the day, and I'm wondering if that'd be worth bringing back. After, especially after watching people like Nurchio uh, in very, very recent games just abuse Nidus Storms crazy, crazy. Mm. Uh, we Thanks gotta... to Chaotic Ranger for subbing. But again, that's a resub. That, as you say, I feel like that's a resub. That that name's too familiar to not be to be new. Yeah, but, yeah. But if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Thank you very much for subbing slash delayed resubbing. Either way. <laughs> now for Suffy, I guess again, just on the topic of roaches, Roach Ravager became really popular for quite some time. We've been seeing it still be kind of the mid game. You use that to get to ultras a lot of the time. But as mentioned, Suppy has been in school. He's been really focused on studies, trying to become a doctor or whatever it is. And it might actually be, he, he could just be a couple months behind the meta. I really, I, can, I have no idea if he's been playing and streaming consistently or not. But I do know the last time he played was when that was so really strong. And nowadays, a lot of Terran have kind of started to figure out how to deal with that Roach Ravager just mess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think that is the case, too. Um, unfortunately, if you're going to... If you're going to practice that, you know, every so often, for the most part, your mechanics stay. Uh, at least this is what I've heard from, like, other, like, pro gamers that have had to go to school and just, you know, they come back and that's what they they remark on. But, it, like, in the meta, like, they're doing stuff that's, like, you know, even, like, a year old because they're bringing back what they're comfortable with each time they come back, yeah. not what they, they have learned about. Because you do, like, if, if someone tells you, like, oh, this is now good, like, they're not going to give you a complete build order and they're not going to learn it in, like, a day. <laughs> so... Uh, bringing back what you know is usually even the safe bet, but I mean, at once upon a time, fast ultras was like the only way to go. So if Suppy was playing in the beta of Legacy of the Void, you can bring that back. Yeah. Ah, uh, by the way, Miss Mods can't stop me. Sixty nine for the three month resub. Thank you very much. And then Catic Ranger says he was sub for a while, but I guess it just yeah, it fell off in between. I knew his name looked familiar. Like there's no way that was a brand new sub. Yeah. Uh, uh we have in Z. Hang on, uh, yeah. BC just hosted us, so shout out and hello to BC's viewers. This is one of the rare times we have no stream delay, so what's up, everybody? You're joining us here in the early rounds of the Corsair Cup. Sorry that BC couldn't play today. I don't know why he can't. I was looking forward to it, but you know, it's okay, whatever. Mm. Well, and Zane is going for a third CC, as I was going to mention, so uh, looking to get pretty greedy. And this is where, like, if Safi was already prepping for some, some type of, like, mid-game all-in, I didn't really at her third base, well, then more power to him, but unfortunately, I really don't think that's the case. Uh, Hellions do get in here, not very much to be done. They do some simple scouting. They see double evolution chambers at the front, but so not much else. That's weird to have had scouted, though, because, again, like not a lot of people will throw down double evo chambers this early, and stuff you did at last game, too. But it, for me, on Frost, going back to it, like this is what you did. You went for double evo chambers, a spying crawler that you stuck your queens in that little hole. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, like hey. this is back in Hots, more than anything else, but, oh, yeah, lewd. Uh, so it's just kind of interesting to see. Now, Suppy is going for double upgrades this time, but it's for melee, not ranged. If it's melee and Banes, maybe he feels more comfortable playing this way. But I think a big part of why maybe he doesn't want to play the other style is with things like Roaches or Queens needing to hit Transfuses, or most importantly, Crossobiles hitting their targets, you need to play with as best latency as possible. Banelings, you can kind of just be like, Law, I moved them, they exploded, nailed it. <laughs> I mean, kind of. <laughs> um... I, I don't know if he's if he's actually going to stay on this, or maybe he'll have a Roach Warren later on. Just because if he did, you know, study, let's say, Nurtio's VODs, it would be about the Roach in the mid game. But we'll really see once he starts up either Typical Hooks or Aspire when that lair is done. Uh, it's not a, I guess, it, it, like looking at it, you know, being such a large map cross spawn, that would be one of the like highlight features of bringing back Mita Ling Bling. I mean, that, I feel like that was the first reason that it became popular again on Dusk Towers, but um, I guess Frost is still kind of new in Legacy the Void. Air quotes. People are definitely choosing it a lot more, though, <laughs> as they realize it's in the map pool. Yeah, we did, like, two giant qualifiers, and everything we've been casting so far has been pretty much strictly Frost, King Sejong, and Dusk Towers, and those three rotating in succession. Mm-hmm. Well, there's really not much going on on the map. Uh, and Zane, I guess, is pushing out a little bit, but without 1-1 one, one and combat shields, I don't think he's ever going to really have to dedicate. And he won't ever have to, because without mutas, you can just pick up and leave. So take whatever banelings you can, and then and bounce. <laughs> and then maybe then worry about mutas. Well, I like the crew spread out of Suppy. Uh, Overlords, of course, know about this coming in the top side. 
Not really losing too much for it just yet, just Marines getting some pokes here and there. But this is that top cliff problem where he doesn't quite have the creep spread up here for vision entirely. The Overlord's providing most of that high ground shots. Uh, so rolling in with the circling and bailings is going to be his only option. They're just going to go face first into this. Mm, target fire could go down on a couple of these banelings, but it's definitely enough the, to push this back. The initial target fire there was actually fantastic. That one banling got picked up immediately. Macro Hatchery coming to main says that Suppy wants to stick to this style. Maybe go a little bit like hashtag snoot on this and go too many links, too many uh, banes. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but focus fire out of Zane's pretty sick. Once again, yeah. picks off the banelings and Suppy can't quite catch this. Uh, yeah, that's the big problem. I, I mean, Suppy into a bad build, and certainly if he just had enough banelings and lings to split, this wouldn't be literally that bad. And now it's getting to that point where he's, he's able to take care of it. But it's kind of the, one of the problems you get if you go for upgrades before mutas or anything before mutas is that the mutas are a little late, so medevacs can be a nuisance. Now, this might be a little dangerous because mutas will be out. And if they ever catch any of these medevacs while they're still uh. in transit, then obviously that's a, that's a problem. My my concern though is that while the mutas are going to be great for picking up uh, medevacs, they're not going to be great for these head-on engagements. And Suppy, I don't think has enough links and more importantly, bane links to actually take mm -hmm. on anything that comes out of these drops. Yeah, they'll certainly need to combine forces. Like this is not enough mutas to take on that many marines. There you go. Maybe now, but he still went in with the mutas first. Oh, that was so a nice last second targeted. Pick. Uh, this side drop going to do a little bit more damage. These Marines are rallied rather poorly. I just noted that, or noticed that Suppy doesn't have Banling speed and isn't starting it either. So a bit of a problem here because I'd say that's more important than Mutalisks. Yeah, I don't think he... Notice, there we go. There it starts up now, but certainly... I think that's like on the borderline of being late. There is a choice you have to make, I guess, as a Zerg player, like so many mutas or centrifugal hooks, and I guess it depends on what situation you're in, but you do eventually need uh, centrifugal hooks. Now, Liberators aren't on the way out, so these mutas, if they ever get across the map, they could probably start, you know, taking out a couple of reactors here and there, but it seems like they're first and foremost necessarily on the front lines. Uh, thank you to Pants United for that $5 donation. He says, we are the new meta. We cover your butts. Deal with it. Hashtag always pants. No. I'm going to go refund that donation. That's some bullshit. I haven't worn pants I, in like I wear pants. two years of pants. casting. I'll, I'll take that donation. No. You, you should not Please be wearing pants. pants. That's your problem. You're like, okay, you know what? I'm going to take one sleeve off and have like one sock on, yet you'll wear pants through heat? Like, what the frick? Well, I mean, if it's hot, I'll change to short pants. Why not just go no pants? No pants is because like the best. Because my door is open and I have people that live in my house. So tell them not to be rude. Put a sign in your door that says, I'm not wearing pants. Knock before you... But it's open. It's open because the cats open it. <laughs> then, I, you know what? Just You got to learn to be confident with your body is what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. Anyway... <laughs> Big fight going down. Swirl yep. did finish up, but that's a pretty good split from Insane. He had but a couple of Marauders soaking up even more. Those Banley still got some fantastic shots through it. I don't know if he can quite finish this off. Suppy got a little bit, I think, greedy going off of creep like that. That cost him a lot of his Banes, and in fact, he did not have round two ready to go as Terra normally do in this situation. So now he's got to pull the drones away. That base is most likely going to die. He's waiting for these extra Banley's to finish up so he can go in on the army. Mmm, but he's actually... Uh... He could have picked off oh, his Marauders a... pretty easily. Yeah. Instead, ends up using no, no, the no. Banelings on them. Oh, no. He just used, like, yeah. six Banelings on them. That's what I was worried about. Oh, but then he tries to okay, <laughs> so... he tries to focus fire that Baneling and then runs into it. I think he's trying to get in the medevac. Whatever. Either way, it doesn't matter. The... Way. Okay, so the army for Insane falls by a pretty harsh number because a lot of medevacs also went down with this fight. But Sapi did lose the base. I guess transferring up here, not so bad. You're still mining, not the end of the world. But this was a very interesting attack where I don't think Zane actually did enough damage for what that ended up costing him at the end. But prior to that last two seconds, that was a fantastic fight for the Terran. I'll agree with that. Now, Zane has a fourth base. He's actually had one for the past, like, two minutes or something. So now he's just taking it. So even if that fight wasn't, like, the greatest, this isn't, like, a three-base all-in situation from the Terran where they're mining out. And now he can just try and, and secure this fourth base. Now this is going to give Seppi a lot of time to obviously reestablish the fourth, even get a fifth base, and get up to Hive apparently, which is going to sneak in there. And that is problematic for Insane. Like he's going to want to push before that Hive is done, and more importantly, for Ultras are out. Which I think he's, he's prepping to do. He is going for this mass bio, I want to add. Like, no Widow Mines, no tanks, just trying to get those Marauders took as many damage as possible, and then depending on his splits, actually taking the fight. 
Well, I like that Suppy's keeping up on the Banelings. He's also still advancing his tech behind this. You know, he's got a 2-2 upgrade set. That's nice, but of course, it's the Hive tech we're looking towards next. And a big question kind of goes in. Like, Suppy's spending as much minerals and gas as he is on all these Banelings. Will he have enough to actually invest in Ultras and beyond after? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a good question. I mean, that's part of the reason why you push. Not just oh. to try and kill the Zerg, but to actually get them to use their minerals and gas on anything but that Ultra transition. But what I'm finding interesting too, well, okay, first off, this fight goes down off creep, and Sapi once again used a lot of his Banelings on the Marauders, but this time he had so many more Banelings, it was kind of okay. Don't know yeah. about how far he wants to chase into this. There's no drops, there's no harass going on the other side of the map. In fact, it's Sapi who's harassing his Lings dart into this southern base. Hmm. Looks like he's either pulled really quickly or just went many to begin with. So this is where that, that control starts getting really important because for Suppy, that's the Ultralisk Cavern coming down for free. Cool, that's maybe kind of his plating, actually having time to finish. But most importantly, he's been keeping Zane's army supply low enough that he's not truly in danger of any like big A-move attack. Yeah, and I'm really worried for Zane. He's not getting another starport or like two more factories or anything like that. He is just sticking on bio, which can be used fine against Mutaling Bling. Like a couple of his splits could have been better and, and whatnot, but obviously it's not working and it definitely won't work against the amount of ultras that Suppy is probably going to be able to get considering that it's, the pressure he feels right now is pretty low wow this is not something you see too often but almost as many marines have died this game as Bane or zerglings excuse me mm. i guess you got like two liberators okay that's gonna help like a little bit they'd be probably I mean, better in anti-air mode to do help with the mutas yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was going to say, is that if they were at all involved in any of the previous fights, all the mutas probably already been dead by now. Alright, so 3 3's finished up here for Inzane. That's going to be really nice for his bio, mostly just because he doesn't have to worry about spending gas on anything else at this point. It's just production from here on out. But the type mm -hmm. of production is going to really matter. As Ultras start coming to play, whether it's Liberators or whether it's going to be Ghosts, Inzane doesn't really have a setup that's going to really hmm. tailor to either. I mean, his, his, his bank just, he, he can't build production structures to increase either of those things. Yeah, he's getting close to a good economy again, or a great economy rather, with, you know, building SCVs. But I'm a little worried that Suppy went for his base upgrades before his plating and any amount of ultras. Um, that took away a ton of his bank. And the thing is, like, you have, they have like one or two ultras, and it's already like suddenly so much, like, it's so much scarier for the Terran to push into you. So I'm going to agree with the only counterpoint being that he's gotten away with so much this game with those bailings. With Let's be honest, even subpar Baneling hits in a lot of these fights. Okay. You know, wasting him on Marauders and whatnot. So, if the emphasis here that he doesn't really care about Ultras and he's more focused on Banelings and Lings, then that's not a bad choice for the upgrade priority. But I agree, like, Kaiten is playing, he should have really started before I think even the first Ultra was made. Mm. Ultras Thanks are just not going to be worth it. Sub. Woo! That's a big yeah, time this, of sub, man. This is an opportunity for Zane to push in with the Ultras still don't have the plating. And, I mean, at this point, it almost looks like he's forgotten about it, but I think his gas has just been reduced so much. Like, with that fourth base going down, the gas is a huge issue. He apparently never took his fifth base gases uh, over here, which is a really big issue. And, of course, that sixth base just went down. So that could be what kills Suppy, just not having the plating here. But Zane goes really deep on a creep. Oh, and this is if he gets the kind, worrying for both parties. If he gets the Evo Chambers, that's, I mean, those are the upgrades. But the Ultras may not have the ability to take the hits. They've got the ability to oh, deal the Jesus. damage. And he pushes this uh, back. Dropping the oh top side once again, though. And Suppy needs mining on this base. Oh, no. Oh, God, oh lordy. So. Oh, this lordy! Oh, no! They would have protected the medevacs for sure, but... <laughs> I, the drone damage was pretty damn real, but playing still starts. That kind of looked like the ult just stepped on him. It didn't really look like right. <laughs> the panelings were in there. But okay, so Suppy has taken some definitive control with the army for now. But he lost the base, and he lost the base, and he doesn't have the greatest mining on the one base that he currently has. With 25 drones, it's hard to replace any of this. So I'm really feeling it for him. But this is where maybe we get that one opportunity for a Super Saiyan attack. He's going to tap out. Oh. So, never mind. Huh. Look at that. 3-3 three, three was just finishing. So was, like, it, okay, he's played it. Ah, okay. Well, unfortunate is unfortunate. Two games where Suppy looked like he had control of the game, and two games Suppy loses. <laughs> okay. So I guess that sounds a little bit more negative when I phrase it like that. I just meant to say, like, that was a sad, unfortunate loss. Because we love, we love seeing Suppy play, guys. It's always nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now that, I mean, if this was BCQ, I think we'd definitely be following into it, but, you know, they'd end up getting that walkover, so we might Lie have to other... Oh, yep, yep, that one. Live versus Mana! 
Live versus mana. This is actually going to be really sick. But yeah, we didn't play ads earlier, guys. So we're going to play ads now. We'll be back in a couple minutes with Bly versus mana PVZ when we return. Oh, it's going to be good.